Welcome to Knee of the Curve. These are the headlines. Tesla rumors are exploding around battery day. For a long time, everyone was saying the announcement would be a 1 million mile battery. Meaning at 10,000 miles a year, your Tesla would still hold a charge long after your brain has been uploaded to the cloud. Not sure what a brain in a jar needs with a Tesla, but yeah, I still want it. Of course, if you decide to make your car a robo taxi, it could accumulate 100,000 miles a year because it would only need to stop working to charge and get the jizz wiped out of it. But in order for most people to be able to afford a car like that, the cost to make batteries needs to come down, which is the other previous rumor I'm about to shatter. Most people think that the announcement will be that they've lowered the cost of batteries below $100 per kilowatt hour for the non-nerds, so like two of you. That's the price that puts them on par with gas cards. You could think of it like the final fuck you to the car industry, but I don't think that's gonna be good enough for Elon. One million mile battery? How about two million? Affordable batteries? How about batteries that make you money? by being used as the backbone for the city of the future's electrical grid. Follow me down this rabbit hole. A leaked internal video that I obtained shows Tesla's lead battery researcher, Jeff Don, giving a presentation explaining how their new technology could be cycled 5,000 times and retain 90% of its capacity. In fact, he said, it's easy to do this. When has Elon ever gotten on stage and said they're gonna do the thing that's easy? Other slides show projections of a battery retaining 90% after driving 3 million kilometers, which is nearly 2 million miles. That's over the course of 25 years, given one full discharge each day. You don't have to be a Tesla fanboy to get a full discharge out of that. Tesla also just quietly announced a new product called AutoBidder, which sounds like a service that would help you buy and sell used Teslas, but it's software they've already been using to manage huge battery grids. Should have called it AutoGridder, because it turns the Tesla network into a power grid. But I guess the auto in their name refers to automatic, and bitter is the fact that it gets you the best price for energy storage that your batteries are providing. I don't know, auto bidder makes me think of auctioneer and auto gritter is also stupid. The point is if you have a car battery that's so good, so efficient, so long lasting that it can go for a million miles or even two, that's more miles than you could use in two lifetimes. So Tesla, in my opinion, is going to announce that they're not only going to basically disrupt the energy industry with solar roofs and power walls, but by creating an entirely new energy grid based on electric cars. I don't need a joke for that because it's that damn cool. Humans are so silly. We're learning to build simulations inside the simulation we already live in. Epic Games just unveiled Unreal Engine 5 Here's live footage of me right after watching the demo. If you haven't seen Ex Machina, that's the scene where Caleb, the main character, thinks maybe I'm a robot. I don't know how you watch this Unreal demo and not instantly think we are, of course, in a simulation. Here's a taste of potential gameplay. We've added predictive foot placement and motion warping, which dynamically modifies IK and body position to look more natural. This statue was imported directly from ZBrush and is more than 33 million triangles. There are over a billion triangles of source geometry in each frame. This isn't noise. These are the triangles, each a different color. Most are so small that they look like noise. Billions of triangles. If you Google the phrase billions of triangles, Unreal Engine 5 is the only thing that comes up. I was trying to write a comparison joke, so I wanted to compare billions of triangles to something else with a lot of triangles, but there's nothing to compare it to. This is the standard, but I'm competitive. I like to win, so please share this video with the hashtag trillions of triangles. The footage looks amazing. The last game I played was Uncharted 4 in 2016. I loved it, but this makes their cutscenes look like dog shit. So gameplay is now better than cutscenes from four years ago. Okay, the character, yeah, she's obviously animated, but she could look way faker and still totally get it. 
and the scenery is almost perfect. Like, if you showed me a video of just the scenery with no character, I don't think I'd be able to tell if it was real or not, which is exactly how I like my women. But word on the forums is gameplay will not end up looking this good, not without some sort of custom water-cooled PS5. Either that, or you're gonna need noise-canceling headphones because your console fans are gonna sound like a Mack truck is idling in your living room. But the point is, given any rate of improvement, even if it takes a thousand years, eventually we will have a simulation that is in indistinguishable from reality. Not just visually, but through the senses as well, which is what Elon is working on with Neuralink. You know, Monkey has been able to control the computer with its brain. Just, you know. Yeah. <laughs> FYI. I bet that's the kind of thing that really got Grimes interested in Elon. She's kind of weird like that. I bet she's like, billions, yeah, yeah, Mars, blah, blah. You have what now? A team of monkeys controlling iPhones? Okay, you can smash. Swedish tech firm Einride has built trucks that allow drivers to work from home. They didn't start out trying to make remote-controlled trucks. They're just so ugly, no truck drivers would be caught dead in them. I mean, they say there's a shortage of truck drivers. It's very, very hard to find drivers. But maybe they'd have more luck if it didn't look like a transformer rabbit with Down syndrome. Still, pretty cool. Drive the truck from here from the comfort of an aerodynamic office chair. Okay, I'm not sure why the chair needs to be aerodynamic. How strong is the air conditioning in that fancy cubicle? Even chairs in real trucks don't need to be aerodynamic. I think he meant ergonomic. Either way, that chair is way too cool looking for what is essentially the most boring version of Grand Theft Auto ever. The government right now restricts them to five kilometers per hour. Five miles an hour? It's gonna take weeks to get your plastic bags, your duct tape, and your shovel. How's that gonna work when you got a body to bury right now? You need Amazon Prime. This video was sponsored by Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime will help you bury a body. But remote control trucks would solve some pretty big downsides of the job. Truck driving is notoriously tough on your body and your relationships, similar to this truck driver's tattoo of tiny hands driving his body. That's dedication. I mean, he put extra nipples on his chest. That is his truck driving resume now. Any potential employer would be like, look, truck driving can be a rough life. Are you sure you can commit? Okay, yep, you got the job. Look, these self-driving truck companies love to say that there's a shortage of truck drivers, even though that claim is disputed by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. I don't know who to believe, but I do know there are few jobs that generate that level of fanaticism. So if truck driving becomes an office job, they're gonna be competing with guys like this, and he's not going down without a fight. Also, fighting this guy would be very confusing. There's four fists. What do I look at? I don't know, maybe this will be a step on the road to full autonomy. One cool thing is that during a pandemic, drivers could keep working and stay isolated, but my personal opinion is as futuristic as remote control trucks seem, I don't see them solving the issue of latency before trucks just become fully capable of driving themselves. Even military drones deal with latency and they have highly sophisticated, dedicated satellites to relay the signal. How are you gonna to swerve to avoid an accident a thousand miles away when you're depending on Sprint? Moderna stock has been on a tear recently. I've been talking about them in a few videos recently, way back when they were at $25, and a lot of you have commented thanking me for turning you on to them and saying I made you a lot of money. And I don't know the legalities around giving stock advice, so I just wanna say I didn't do anything. Uh, you made that money on your own, great job, but hey, Message received, and my PayPal is in the show notes. This week, Moderna announced two things. One, their phase one coronavirus vaccine trial is crushing it. Possibly, maybe, even probably. Their press release states, mRNA-1273 vaccination elicited neutralizing antibodies as measured by plaque reduction neutralization assays against live SARS-CoV-2 the levels of neutralizing antibodies at day 43 were at or above levels generally seen in convalescent sera. Before you look up assay and convalescent sera because you're as dumb as me, I already did it 
an assay is basically the test that figures out the amount of something, and convalescent sera is the blood from people who have recovered from a disease. Meaning, Moderna's vaccine made these people create the same amount or more of the type of antibodies found in people who have recovered from coronavirus. Far from conclusive yet, but still encouraging. Despite all this, there are still people who believe COVID-19 is a hoax perpetrated by Bill Gates, Anthony Fauci, and the Anunnaki. Famous anti-vaxxer doomsayer, and I assume family embarrassment, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is claiming responsibility for a slight correction in Moderna's stock price on Tuesday in a rant on Instagram saying, the vaccine is dead on arrival, it's not, that the high dose group suffered 20% serious harmful events, they didn't, and claims one of Moderna's main investors did a shady stock sell-off when in fact he was actually eliminating a conflict of interest so he could serve as chief advisor in the White House. But wow, look how many really real followers that are totally not Russian bots this account has. <laughs> Unfortunately, many actual humans will be persuaded by this and will sadly be rooting for vaccines to fail. But hey, the more people think this is a hoax, the better Moderna's stock will do after the virus has a truther-fueled second wave this fall. Again, PayPal in the show notes. Huge thanks to the Patreons uh, funding the channel. If you guys like tech news and jokes, consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss one, or even becoming a patron like these awesome people. Thanks to Ryan Stout for his writing contributions. He's got three comedy albums. Go buy one or all three. Definitely leave a comment about what you think of this video, and I'll do my best to respond. If you'd like to pitch in on episodes or just chat about futurism with other like-minded people, join my Discord chat room where I post view links to all my scripts so you get to see how they develop and chat me up about joke ideas. Find me and the show on Twitter and Instagram. And otherwise, uh, you know, just click on one of these other videos to stay up to date on how technology is changing everything. Thanks for watching. Peace.